So Hard Yakka is, it is a venture fund, but it was not done with other people's money. The funding for Hard Yakka came from fortuitous investments in Twitter and Square, and then doubled down by investing in Bitcoin and Ether, especially in Solana, and a bunch of other startups that are common names today. And so we had sort of an embarrassment of fortunes. Rather than paying that out, we've decided to double down and build what we call an ecosystem. And in this ecosystem, we're looking for a new form of the US dollar. So USBC currently is a stable coin. Think of it as like an electronic $100 bill. Such a token would be issued directly by the banks with no middlemen. The difference is stable coins today are issued by financial services organizations like a Coinbase or a Tether. There is an ability to issue a stable coin directly by the banks. Currently, banks hold the money for Tether and for USDC, but you could cut out the middleman. And a bank or a consortium of banks could just issue those tokens directly. And if that happened, those tokens could be FDIC insured, which is a big benefit over the stable coins we have today in terms of people feeling safe that they could have these. They would still have the interoperable benefits, meaning you could send it from one wallet to another. The dollars aren't trapped, for instance, just in a square wallet or a WeChat wallet. So we're looking for a form of the US dollar, just like we have $100 bills and we can take and use them anywhere, but we're looking for the electronic version of that that can move between any two wallets in the world, between any payor and payee, any consumer, any merchant can move in real time with virtually no fees. And so we're on the cusp of doing that. And so USBC would be our alternative to one up what Tether and USDC are today by cutting out the middleman. So in today's stablecoin world, there's blockchains behind that, which means you issue a dollar on a blockchain ledger and it moves around. And the challenge with that is anybody can be on that ledger. Now, some people think that's an advantage, but it means also bad actors can be on that ledger. They can be on that ledger without any identity. There's an alternate view that says before you put the money on the ledger, you start with a ledger of identity. That everybody who's gonna hold money has to have an identity first. And that identity starts with a name, not a number. Everybody can have a unique name, just like every website on the domain name system is different, so you never get a collision. Apple.com, Pepsi.com, you always know you're dealing with who you think you're dealing with. There's not a duplicate actor. We could do the same by giving every person, every entity, a unique name. And to that name can be a bundle of sticks attached. It might be your social media messages. It might be credentials like your driver's license, your medical records, your right to vote. But it could also be your money. And in this particular case, it could be a form of a U.S. dollar that is attached. And the ledger that keeps track of who has how much all across all the people and entities, it's a universal ledger to go with the universal namespace. So whenever you're transferring money from one person to another or one party to another, it doesn't need to go through a complicated clearing and settlement system. It's just on a flat ledger. It's like one big Excel spreadsheet that's indelible, auditable, with the proper controls could have privacy preserving, and yet still could be compliant. And so the universal namespace, the universal ledger, and something called verifiable credentials, which means your way of proving your phone number, your driver's license, the fact that you have a financial account or graduated from a particular university, means that as long as that credential is written correctly, it doesn't matter what wallet or application it comes from, it's your credential. And you can share it with whoever you want. So you combine those three things, a universal namespace, a universal ledger, and a universal standard for verifiable credentials, and you have the foundation for a compliant version of what's already operating out there via Tether and USDC with less controls. And so this is a way of bringing the safeguards that are in the traditional financial system to mesh with the advantages and innovation of blockchain technologies so that everybody can get access to payments, options, the ability to hold money, potentially earn yield in the most inclusive, efficient way possible. Extending this besides and beyond the 5% of people that live in the United States to the other 95% of the world. I think that's good for the US dollar. It reinforces our strength. It's not about America, it's really about the US dollar. And you know, big supporters here of that for safety and soundness reason, 
I just think that that's the best alternative, using the technology behind Bitcoin and Ethereum, but building it for the U.S. dollar itself.